This is what it looks like to live out the dream of a million Formula One fans. This is Ricky. He's a Driver61 subscriber, but he's never driven on track before. You've been in a single seater before? Is this a go kart camp? And today I'm going to coach him to drive this 2012 Formula One car. Uh... What am I doing here? But why? Well, after two and a half years and 245 videos, Driver61 hit 1 million subscribers. And so to give back, we picked one of you to come and drive a Formula One car. That's why I'm here today. Um, we chose a subscriber at random who's in the back of the van to, to drive uh, today. Uh, so you are the guy who had not to pay. Yeah. <laughs> and so we flew Ricky 4,000 miles from New York to Paul Ricard in France. I feel so cool in this uh, racing gear. But they don't just let anyone drive these cars. So Ricky will need to show he can drive in a Formula 4 car before Alpine let him drive the actual car that Kimi Raikkonen drove in the 2012 season. After a recce lap in the van, it was time to get ready. Do you think he's nervous? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of information to take in. We're going around the track and, and trying to learn it. He's now got to go and prove himself in the F4 car, right? These guys from Alpine are the ones who make the decision on whether they let the, these drivers into their precious Formula One car. And so if Ricky's not driving the F4 car properly, it definitely isn't a given that he'll get to drive the F1 car. You may be wondering why I'm looking fancy in my Winfield kit. Well, I actually used to coach here, teaching normal people like Ricky to drive F1 cars. So I'll be his coach for the day so we can really see what he can do. After some briefings about the F4 car, it was time to get Ricky warmed up. I'm ready, <laughs> feeling good. I'm really afraid that I'm not gonna not gonna get the car out of first gear. I could tell Ricky was a bit nervous to get in the F4 car. So like any good coach, I decided to mess with him. Have you been doing those neck exercises that I said? <laughs> no. No? You didn't send me any neck exercises. I did like a week ago. You actually did. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there gonna be a lot of jumping involved? Good flexibility there, Ricky. Look at that. Thank you. You've done that, you've done that before, haven't you? Yeah, I do this every day. <laughs> do you? Actually, yeah, for marathon training. This guy. Pick the right guy. It's quick. That's cool. It's going quick. What do you think when you hear the F4s that go fast? crazy. I mean, if that's F4, what's yeah, that's the V8 going to sound like, you know? So the point of this first session or these first three sessions in the F4 car is for you to learn the track, enjoy the experience, but also so that we can look at the data and make the decision as to whether you're getting on the brakes hard enough, whether you're working the tires hard enough, because that F1 car isn't made to be driven slowly. I'm gonna be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it was time for Ricky to get kitted up and in the F4 car. He looks like a generic career mode driver, is what he's just said. <laughs> yeah, this is like your, you just purchased the game. Yeah. You start multiplayer, this is the car you got. Ricky, how you feeling? Feeling fantastic. <laughs> bit nerve-wracking. I'm literally sitting inside a Formula 4 car and it still hasn't sunk in yet. Although these are a lot slower than an F1 car, they actually teach you everything you need to know. They have a 160 horsepower Renault engine, full carbon chassis, plenty of downforce and slick tyres. So it will definitely be a challenge for someone with zero track experience. So what we're doing in this session is just showing Ricky the racing lines. Obviously he's never been out on a racetrack before. He's not sat in a single seater before, so he is going to be massively overstimulated at the moment. Oh my God, this is insane. I'm in a place. If you'd like to experience what Ricky is about to, we're running another competition. Ricky is one of the few people in the world to have the opportunity to drive an F1 car, and you can too. We've launched Driver61 Experiences, where you can win a drive in this F1 car. Click the link below to enter now, and maybe I'll see you in France. Now, let's see how Ricky gets on in that F4 car. He must be smiling quite a lot in that car, I think. <laughs> it's sticking with me now, so I think we'll start pushing a bit harder. Oh, Rick is coming hot. He's coming hot from wide. Get back on the truck. Oh, God. <laughs> I understand what it's like now. 
with the safety car leading the F1 field. Because <laughs> I'm pushing as hard as I can push. Oh! After that first session, you could really tell things had sunk in. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. My nose was itchy the whole time. <laughs> Are you doing a great job? I mean, you know, there's only so fast we can go in, in a road car. I was going as fast as I could go in that, and you looked like you were handling I mean, you, it you seemed like you were about to slip a few times. Yeah, we, yeah, <laughs> we were, yeah. The first session was pretty relaxed, learning the track and the car. But this next one was really serious. This is a session where you try and build a bit of speed. Uh -huh. This is probably the most important session because this is the one where the data engineer is going to be really looking at your data. You know, it's a fine line between going fast and looking dangerous to the data yeah. engineer. But go out there and, and enjoy it. If you take the same kind of mentality that you had in that first session, you'll be, you'll be great. After just one session in the car, Ricky was getting a bit too confident. <laughs> Spot the American. <laughs> He's getting a bit excited. <laughs> just gonna soften the rear bump, the, the slow bump a little bit. He was struggling with traction a little bit before. Another dial up on the front wing. <laughs> And so Ricky got in the car and pulled away absolutely flawlessly. I think he's given himself whiplash. Ricky was building up pace steadily, feeling where the limit was and where he could carry more speed. He was carrying more speed through the fast corners and being braver on the brakes. It was all looking very good. And Ricky looked great then, so all looking good for driving the F1. Until Ricky got a bit too brave. So we've just heard that Ricky had a spin in the most dangerous part of the track, scene corner. He was doing great before that, and now, um, you know, that actually probably puts things in a bit of jeopardy because it's not ideal that you're having a spin on the fastest part of the track. After a very lucky escape where he could have crashed into the barrier, Ricky came into the pits. So I had myself a little bit of a spin. So I, I don't think you have little spins at scene. As I was turning in, I was uh, like approaching the apex and I was like, I'm still on fire, holy so I let go of the throttle, ah. and then uh, it just, one thing led to another, next thing I know I'm... So what happens if you have a big lift like that when you're already in the corner, uh -huh. the weight goes on the nose like this, uh, comes okay. away from the rear and you, you disappear down so the track. So that's why I did that. It kind of adds a bit of pressure now to your last session, because <laughs> you need to have a super clean, smooth session. Okay, I right? can't do that again. You can't do that again, no, you can't. Oh, all right. <laughs> so I don't mean to be like overly harsh on Ricky, but the fact of the matter is he's had a spin on the most dangerous corner here at Paul Ricard and so it can't be ignored unfortunately. Up until that point he was in a fantastic job. He overtook a few people. Yeah he overtook, I think he was the quickest car on track. He looked great coming where I could see him in this final part of the lap he looked absolutely fantastic but I think the confidence might have just got away with him a little bit. Okay mate non-stop you got to get back in the car. Actually? Yeah. So in this session, like you, you genuinely, you need to focus on like making sure you break in the right point, slow it down. Let's make sure we have a nice clean session so we can get you out there. All right. Cool. No pressure. No pressure, man. <laughs> Ricky went out for his final session. This time he was smooth, remembered to break the scene corner and was going quicker and quicker. But after a successful session and taking the checkered flag, Ricky made another mistake. I think he's gone off again. Three minutes. Come on. I feel like a, a nervous parent waiting for his waiting for his son to come back. I messed up. Is that him? Oh, he'd been off again, I think. He's got flat spots. 
Let me explain what happened. When getting on the brakes at turn one, he was also pushing the accelerator by accident, which is an easy thing to do in these cars. This meant the car shut itself off and we had to send someone to restart it. That doesn't worry me as much as the spin at scene before because that's just a simple mistake. And actually when you get in the F1 car, you'll have left and right so foot there. The very, I don't know, okay. to be honest with you, mate. It's not my decision, so. So I went to have a difficult chat with the Alpine engineers to see if they were going to let Ricky live out his dream. He had driven well, built up progressively, and was actually the fastest driver on track. But there was no escaping that spin. He cannot do that in the F1 car. It would be a 10 million pound crash. Thankfully, they decided to let Ricky drive the car, and there was only one way to tell him. Crazy! <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times I hear oh that thing fly by, it's incredible. Okay. <laughs> I'm supposed to drive that, do that. That's my impression. <laughs> this car is going to be a different ball game for Ricky. It's got a 700 horsepower V8 that revs to 18,000 RPM. It's super light and has Pirelli slick tires. This is the real deal. This actual car won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in 2012 and now is going to be driven by Ricky. One of the biggest issues is actually not using enough RPM because this thing idles at 4,000 RPM and revs right up to 18,000. You know, you have to adjust your hearing to, to kind of get used to that massive peak in RPM. And so this was it. After all the prep, the mistakes and the adrenaline, it was Ricky's turn to get in the car. Any last thoughts before you jump in? Uh, uh, Do you feel nervous or are you just calm? The adrenaline's already starting to kick in, but... And probably the most complicated bit is just actually getting it away and out of the pit lane. And then once you're out on the track, actually, I think everything will feel like it flows a lot more. We'll do the radio check, make sure you can hear me okay, and go from there. Time to find out what a normal guy, a subscriber to our channel, can do in an F1 car. Radio check, Ricky, radio check, thumbs up. So the guys are going to start it up in a few minutes. They'll push you out into the pit lane. Then we do clutch up into first gear. Slowly let the clutch out, no throttle. Once it's pulled away and, and you're moving and the clutch is fully out, then we begin to accelerate, knock it up to second with the right paddle, and then you'll be out on the track. Good luck, mate. Enjoy it. Bloody f hell. Here we go. Just enjoy it. and then you'll be out on the track. Good luck and have fun. Thank you, Scott! Thank you, Scott! Thank you so much, Scott! Oh my God! Ricky started slowly, but that noise, the RPM, the vibrations, everything about this car is overwhelming. <laughs> and after only his first lap, Ricky fully floored the car for the first time. <laughs> As it was Ricky's last lap, he started to push the car a lot harder. He'd 
Bennett learnt quickly in the F4 car, made a mistake but made up for it, then drove the F1 car extremely well considering his experience. These cars are very hard to drive quickly, everything is just so savage. And huge thanks from me, the Driver61 team and Ricky for getting us to 1 million subscribers.